Drum Alert Nation. I'm your host, Killer Keemstar. Let's get right into the news. Today we have Basherverse here for an interview. Basherverse, how's it going? It's it, I've been better. <laughs> I, I can imagine. Basically, the Drum Alert team did more research into what happened with Basher 11 years ago. And we can now confirm that the ages were 18 and 15, not 20 and 13. Um, I wanted to get Basher on here uh, first to apologize. You know, Drum Alert reports the truth, right? We, 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 we've never reported that the victim was 13. All we've ever reported was that Sky Does Minecraft said the victim was 13, that the zombie unicorn said the victim was 13. And yeah. based on these people and their reputations, you know, my personal opinion was that you were lying. Uh, now that we know that that's 100% truth, the first question I have for you is, how did this rumor start that the victim was 13? Well, <clears throat> it started when, uh, when I moved out here to Seattle. Uh, we were putting something together, and there were background checks that had to be had to have been made, and they did a background check on me and they found out about my past, which I've covered in a previous video, my life story and confession. And, uh, it was after a party one night that they pulled me aside and it was, um, it, I felt good that night and everything was going great. And we sat down outside and then suddenly, uh, one of them said, I'm not doing names by the way, because I just don't want to hurt anyone. Um, one of them said, we know about your past. Uh, it came up in a background check. And right. at that moment, like the world just shattered because I had, you knew, I had, you knew exactly what they were talking about. Oh, of course, because I had been a shut in for years because of this. I had been punishing myself for years because of this very thing. And I thought it was over. I thought I had been able to move on. I'm, I'm making a career for myself. I'm excited about this project we're all creating. And then suddenly, here it is in my face. So, so, I, so, my, so how did they... Okay, but this happens, right? How did they get yeah. the impression that the girl was 13? I haven't a clue how they got that impression, but... Uh, apparently one of them did research on it and they even called the local police department and they claim that they told them every single detail. Now I, that has to be a lie because no police department's allowed to do that, especially like right away. Like, Oh, can you tell you have to do, you have to have money for one to do something like that time though. That takes a lot of time and you have to have a, a valid reason to do it. So, so, so do you think, um, some of these people that said that the victim was 13. And again, we, I feel bad. I feel bad because I thought that you're just a pathological liar and you do have a history of lying, right? No, I, I fully admit that I, yes, I had a, it, it was terrible. But you weren't lying about this. You weren't lying about the age. So do you think no. that these people said the victim was 13 or the girl was 13 do you think that they have something against you or, and that they're out to get you in some way? I, I don't honestly know. I would like to think they didn't. I've been constantly trying to figure out why they would s say this stuff. They actually said, and, and this is verbatim that the victim was 13, that I had raped her two times and I was arrested in front of her parents. None of that is true. That is completely insane because my my charge was sexual misconduct. How could anyone of any age rape someone at 13 and the judge be like, uh, slap on the wrist, you can go? It, it, that makes absolutely no sense. But so, that's what was brought to me. So why why do you think uh, uh, that they're out, like they're after you? Like was there, I mean- Obviously, we're talking about other YouTubers. I know you don't want to mention names, but we're talking about other YouTubers. Yeah. But why Why yeah. are they out to get you? I haven't I haven't a clue. Like, Okay, let's talk, I, let's talk about... Just, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
I, I don't think they're... I, I, it doesn't make sense that they would be out to get me. And that's what confuses me the most about this whole thing is like, I didn't, I never understood why this rumor became so just widespread and why it even started in the first place. It just, it makes absolutely no sense. Well, that's my job is to get the truth and, and we're getting there now. So you upload this video. It's a 45 minute video of you telling your story of your life. And then for a brief second, or I shouldn't say a second, but for a very short time in this video, you talk about this event that happened. And when I watched your video, I saw it as manipulation. I, I saw it as you telling a story about, you know, you had this horrible, horrible life and that this thing happened to you, which you were guilty of. And then you went right into horrible, horrible life. I was a shut it. I saw it as manipulation and you were trying to be the victim. No. Why did you tell no, the story? Why did you tell the story the way you did? Can you describe that? Of yeah. What because, your thought process was. Well, the whole thing was supposed to be me just getting everything out because I just couldn't, I couldn't live with myself. That's why I, I wanted to not be in the shut in mindset anymore. I just wanted the truth to be completely out there and, damned if I do, damned if I don't kind of thing. I'd struggle with myself if I didn't tell it. I never, you know, I might be able to move on if I did tell it. So I told my life story and the confession, and a lot of people were saying I didn't say that I was sorry for it, but that's what the whole story was about because I punished myself far more severely than I think I ever should have. That's why I talked about being a shut-in and stuff because that was me pretty much punishing myself. I create, since I felt like a terrible person for what had happened, I had to move. I, I lost all my friends. I, it was, it was just horrific. It was a horrific event in my life. And it was consensual, by the way, between me and this girl. It was, there was nothing forced on anyone. That's why it was a sexual misconduct charge. So, so it, but the thing is, I, I punished myself by locking myself in my room for, for a very, very long time. So, and that's why I told the story like I did, because I wanted people to understand that I am sorry for that, that, that it did destroy me so much that it took up a, almost a decade of my life. So you came out of that and you started doing YouTube, you get this YouTube career. Um, you know, this thing comes out that you're telling the truth about, but other things come out. Other girls come out and say, you know, I was 17 at the time and Basher made advances towards me. Let's talk first about yeah. Ashley. She like what happened with Ashley. She, she came on drama alert and she said she was in a, a yeah. relationship with TBR frags that they broke up for a short period of time and that you made advances towards her. Now I know that you, you and her are cool right now. I know that you, you spoke. Yeah, out to I, her. I outright apologize to her. We were, we've talked and everything. And, and the same thing happened yeah. with this girl, Allie, right? Um, she claims that yeah. you made some advances towards her when she was on Snapchat. And I know that you've reached out to her and apologized to her. Yeah. I have what because because I felt terrible for these things. So we know that you were sorry about what what happened many years ago, but something yeah. kind of similar just happened recently. So why did this happen? I don't want to say again because it's you know these girls are you know sixteen and seventeen. They're not you know fifteen, which I mean yeah. I, but why did something similar like this happen again? Are you attracted? Well, the, are you attracted to teenage girls? No, not te no, not teenage girls. Here's the thing: I didn't know their age for one, but that's literally not that is not an excuse whatsoever. That's ridiculous. That's like speeding and you know saying, "Oh, officer, I didn't know the law" and stuff like that. But what I was was. With I know with Ashley, and she's a cool girl and stuff, I was trying to be there for her during her breakup, and I was lonely at the time, too, 
And I, I don't remember the conversations at all. This was a while back. But she came out and stuff, and I have apologized to her for it. And um, I, I, I don't know. Like, I guess I made advances towards her that were uncalled for, and I feel like crap for that. I, this was also when I was a shut-in. This was long before Clara. This is before Clara. And um, I don't know. It just it killed me a little bit inside. Well, I know both of them have kind of forgiven you because they've said so publicly. Um, yeah. Will you ever do anything like this again? Make advances towards, you know, underage girls? Oh, God, no. God, no. So this experience that... has been big enough where you know that, like, you can't do anything like this. Well, of course. It's... I am... <laughs> I can't even say how ridiculously sorry I am. Okay. I'm not kidding. Like it's let's talk about you went to LA and there's a project that you were going to do with uh bam lounge. Is that the correct name? Uh, yes. Okay. So you and bam lounge, everyone knows about this. You guys made a vlog, you know, this is kind of in the public. They were tweeting about it and stuff. You, yeah. your, your girlfriend at the time, Clara, you're out doing this project. We're gonna, eh, well, names and stuff. Well, I mean, everyone knows who we're talking about, but yeah, but I don't want to like screw with them. I I don't want to mess up anyone's and that's fine. And I know, uh, first of all, before we've done this interview, I just want to let the public know that or before we did this interview that Bash told me privately that he didn't want to mention any names, that he didn't want any ill will to come to anyone from him doing this interview. But at the same time, I stress to him that telling the truth of everything that's happening is yeah. the best result. So that let's try to tell the truth. Let's try to tell the story. But again, understand that he doesn't want ill will to happen to anyone, but yeah, let, I don't want to hurt anyone's careers let, and stuff. Let's get right into it. You guys were working on a project. Um, this story starts coming out, you know, more girls start coming out and you were kicked, mm-hmm. you were kicked off the project. Um, then Clara literally the, that night, like then, then Clara, uh, broke up with you and yeah, she's staying on the project. Can you explain yeah. like what happened with all that? Because you've told me privately, um, and I know you really don't want to tell the story publicly, but for the first time, I feel really sorry for you of what happened during all this. And I think it's important that that you tell the story. So can you describe <sighs> what happened well, when you were kicked off the show or excuse me, the project? Well, uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. It was, a. it was, it was, it was probably the most amazing day of my life. We had just gotten done doing a, an interview with these big people and it looked really amazing. And then we got done doing another uh, meeting with these other people and the future's looking amazing and bright. And um, <laughs> just, and then the night came and we got texts from, um, God, I can't say names cause I just really don't want to. You got texts from somebody. Lives. <laughs> yeah. They got texts from someone. That's saying girls are coming out. And I I assume it was, you know, Ashley or... um, Allie. Allie, yeah. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, But they got those texts and they told me and my brain started melting completely. I started having that moment, like just like on the back porch. Like, I don't know how to handle... um, being scared because when I was a shut in, I could freak out all I wanted in my room. But now that I'm not a shut in, I I don't know how to handle it out in public. Sorry. My throat is just destroyed. I've been crying like crazy all freaking week. This has killed me. Well, um, anyways, uh, so I start freaking out and I'm like, Oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I I need to run away. I literally wanted to run away. I, I even turned to one of them and asked if I could stay with them in Canada. 
I'm not kidding. I, that's how much I was freaking out. I, I was pacing back and forth. I was thinking about just running and running and stuff. I just did not want to be there at that moment because I was like, what, what girls did I talk to? Like, what the hell? Because I don't go out of my way to talk to underage girls. I just don't do that. If I talk to an underage girl, I did not know their age. They lied about it or it just didn't even get mentioned and I'm flirting or something. So when all, all of a sudden there's this news of underage girls coming out, I'm I'm like, oh my God, what the hell? Why? Why? Why is this happening right now? Because so it was their, the greatest day. What was their response to it? They asked me, they were like, dude, you have to you have to be honest here. You know, what how many girls are there? How many freaking girls are there? And at the time I was like pacing back and forth in the room and I was just thinking about every single girl I've ever talked to in the past eight years of being a shut in. Like that's my, how my brain was working. I'm like, oh my God, how many people could have lied to me? How many people have I talked to? This is scary as hell. What am I doing? Because all of this stuff is from the past. The, the, right. the girls that came out, all of this happened in the past. So I don't know what the hell's going on. And I was like, what? I don't know, dude, freaking 5, 20? I, it could be 20. And they apparently took me freaking out saying that as a confession of guilt, apparently. And then they, and they kicked you off the show right then and there? No, that's the weird part. They didn't do anything mean to me. They were pretending, I guess pretending, uh, I don't want to say mean things about them because I don't know what their true intent was, but just I know what the end result was. All all anyone wants to know is the truth. Okay. And I think yeah. what you told me in private, I think if the public were to hear that, they would better understand you. Because when the public <coughs> when the public and when I seen your friends leave you. And your girlfriend break up and leave. Did it at the same time too, like a strategic move. It was really freaking creepy. I just want to explain to you my point of view and what I think other people's point of view that saw this thing is when I see yeah. your friends leave you and your girlfriend leave you, we mm -hmm. kind of seen it as they know too. They know too that you're a bad guy, that that you're gonna do bad things. But the story that you told me is different. And the story that I've heard from other people is different. So I, you know, you keep stressing, I don't want bad ill, Ill will to come to these people. I don't, and I really don't. You were wronged in this situation. And I think you should just tell, <sighs> tell everyone what happened. Well, so at that point, they just said, well, man, if, if this, this is crazy. So, you need help. You need to get some help and you don't need to be here when this happens. And I was just freaking out so bad. I was like, am I going to be arrested? Am I, am I going to be arrested? Because that's all I kept doing was having flashbacks of when the first time happened. I'm like, how the hell did this happen freaking again? This is insane. And they said, dude, we're here for you. We will help you. Don't worry. We're all here for you. It's, it's not, it's probably fake. It's not a big deal and stuff. And they escorted me down to the car and they were saying, you know, you need to go home. You need to go not to not to Seattle, but you need to go home to your mom in Kentucky where she can help you. Because my mom was part of the justice system. She was part of the legal system. And, and, and you went they by knew that. And you went by yourself or did Clara go? No. With you? OK, that, that's the thing. We bought tickets and Clara came with me. But here's the thing. If the, I've heard from many people during this week that the BAM, I don't like names, but you, you know who I'm talking about. Everyone knows, right, it's, said it. everyone knows it's the BAM lounge. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, you can't tell the story without telling the name. Just, no. just continue. People told you this week. But people have told me that they had claimed that when they found out, they sent me home and... They, like they kicked me home, like sent me home, like, oh, you need to get out of here now, leave, that kind of thing. That it's not true at all because Clara came with me. If they, if they did that, if they legitimately kicked me 
out and told me to go home forcefully, why would they send Clara with me? If they thought I was a, a weird psycho pedophile or something, why in the world would they send Clara with me? So you, And she did come with me. So you and Clara, you get home to Kentucky, right? Yeah. You're there. You're at your mom's. Uh, what happens next? Well, here's the thing. At the airport... Um, at the airport, they were texting her and things. And I was trying to find out what the texts were about. And I was kind of like looking over her shoulder, kind of seeing it too, because I just didn't know what the hell was going on. And I thought they were there for me and I thought they were my friends, but apparently uh, they said otherwise during this week, but they said literally, uh, Clara, this project that we're working on is no longer interested in Brandon, but they still want you. So, God, I don't want to. I feel like just shit tells just, this. Just tell the story. What happened? They they wanted <laughs> your girlfriend on the show, okay. but they kicked you off, right? <sighs> they said that they don't want me anymore. They're no longer interested in me, but they're still interested in her. And they said that she has to make a choice, stay with me and not be on this project or leave me and you're still on this project. And this is all happening within hours, literally hours of, of this is, this is not, it's, it's insane. So, and, um, so we get, we get home, we finally get home and, uh, <coughs> We decided to go to bed and we went to bed. And of course we had to sleep in separate rooms because I was at my mom's and she's a very Southern Baptist Christian lady. And she just, no, you know? Right. Um, so I wake up in the morning and I, and I go upstairs to, because something in my mind is thinking she ran away or something. So I'm, I need to check on her. So I go upstairs and I look in the room and she's still there. And I feel so freaking relieved. And we hug. Because you felt it. You felt that she was about to betray you. Yeah, I thought she was going to just leave me because this was all insane. I didn't know what was going on. I'm sure she didn't know what was going on. It was it was absolutely nuts. This was just. So what happens next? What happens next? She says she has to leave. And it, my brain was melting. Where, where did I, I, when you she said that? Where did you think she was going? I had no idea. Like where where would she go? And then she was like, "I'm contacting my uncle," and her uncle lived nearby. And um, she just started contacting her uncle, and my 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 brain was just. Melting my heart was like being destroyed. I started bawling. I started just like, what? Why? Why? Why are you leaving me? Why? Like, why don't you stay longer? What? What is making you leave me? And she would not look me in the eyes. She didn't shed a single tear. It was the most pathetic thing I've ever done. My mom was even there. She can attest to it, but I know she won't because she, right. no offense, she doesn't like you. <laughs> so she so she leaves goes with her uncle all right yeah and then she flies all the way back to seattle no she flew to la she to get to- be with the bam guys again and she's still that, gonna be on the itself. project yeah so your friends disown you and then your girlfriend who you love and you thought that she loved you. Oh God, I love her, dude. Disowns you, have you no idea. for her career. That made I, me feel sorry for you. That yeah. legitimately made me feel sorry for you, man. I don't like this stuff that happened between you and these younger girls. And I think that that's you, why I apologized. I don't either. I, I don't think you can ever do anything like this. Enough people know about this situation where you won't do anything like this, right? I think no. that the punishment of you being through the runner in this whole community uh, is enough for what you did. And I don't think that you need to still be kicked while you're down. 
But when you, yeah. when we seen your girlfriend who only has a career because of you, I mean, literally, she was not a YouTuber. She didn't have a channel. She didn't have a career. She was just a fan of yours that started <sighs> dating you and then got a career I, because she was dating you. Uh, when I saw her leave you and pick a career over you who gave her everything that she ever had, I felt legitimately sorry for you. Well, it only started kind of hitting me uh, later in the week when I was calming down pretty much. But I don't know how to say this without hurting her and stuff because I don't want to hurt her. I I genuinely love her more than anything. Well, like I'm gonna, anything I'm gonna, on this earth. I'm gonna. I'm all about the truth. I'm gonna tell you the truth right now. She she don't love you. She she wants a career out of this. <laughs> like I mean that's just evident by anyone that looks at the situation and i'm not talking shit about you i'm just saying think about that though that's so i'm not talking she... shit about her um and, but i mean it just is what it is you know it, it's it's it is what it is tv show or boyfriend she but the, yeah but or project i should say <laughs> but um, she like but dude i don't want to like hurt her and stuff i really don't that that is the thing I don't want to do, at all. Like I'm, I love her to death. Even I, she used you, Basher. No, but, she did. She used you for her career in gaming entertainment. Mm -hmm. But okay, I'll, I'm gonna say another thing. And but she was there. But she was there for me a lot. Don't get me wrong. You know, she was there for me a lot, and she loved me. I. I strongly believe that she loved me. But, okay, can I explain something to you, Basher? Okay. She was there yeah. for you and she loved you because you were providing her with a career. Once your career, in the eyes of many people, was done and over with and she could no longer gain from you, she dropped you. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, it's not, it's not kind of, <sighs> it's not up for debate. It is what it is. Okay. So... Yeah, That's I guess, when I feel uh, sorry for you. And here's the other thing. Today on Instagram, you tweeted out a picture of you getting the million subscriber plaque from YouTube. And yeah. I'm a defender of gaming entertainers. And a lot of people will be jealous of bigger YouTubers and be hateful. Uh, I never really hate on success. I admire people in gaming entertainment that are successful. I, I admire them. And when I was thinking about this today, I was taking some cracks at you on Twitter and stuff. And yeah, someone came to me and they said, look, you're going too far with this. And then I seen the Instagram picture of the million dollar plaque. And then I got information. All this happened right at the same time. Then I got information that you were telling the truth about the age of the girl being 15 and you being 18, almost 19. When all that yeah. happened at once, I realized that we needed to do this interview and that no matter what, I was going to try to get you to do this interview. And I'm glad that we're doing it right now. I didn't but, think it was a good idea. Honestly, I'll well, be completely well, honest. So, well, I think I it is a good idea. I don't want to hurt people. I seriously do not want to hurt people. That's not who I am. I think, and, I think that you lost a lot. I think that you lost a lot of fake friends. Oh God, I, I lost so much through this. You have no idea. I think that you lost a fake girlfriend. I think that you lost a bit of your reputation, but I think some of those things that you lost was deserved because of what you did. All right. It, what you did wasn't not wrong. There was some stuff no, that I you agree. did that was wrong. But no, I one agree. thing, 100%. One thing that I don't think that you should lose is your career in gaming entertainment. And I, I felt that way very strong today when I seen that plaque of over a million subscribers, you know, you know, if you were to lose that, it wouldn't be just you losing it. It would be all of your fans that enjoy your work losing that too. That's affecting a lot of people. And I think, again, I'm going to say that you lost a lot and that if there's one thing that you should be able to keep is your career in gaming entertainment. I, I hope I can after this. You have no idea. Like, that's that's my goal. 
that I just love seeing people say how much their lives have changed because of me and how inspired they are. There's so many people out there that are shut-ins just like I was, and I just want to inspire them and show them that this is an awesome life that you can have. And just don't stop. Seriously. Don't don't just give up because I know I wanted to many, many times when I was a shut-in, and they can't do that. And that's what I was afraid of the most about all of this. Losing, it wasn't about me losing my career, but it was losing my influence to actually change people, to actually help people that are going through the same crap that I'm going through. And that's that's what I hated the most. Some people said that you are a good person, but you have kind of a weird mentality where you didn't have much of a childhood and that you're kind of stuck at a teenage mentality. Do you think that's fair to say? Well, because you were honestly, well, I've been thinking that this has actually been brought up to me quite often uh, over the past week. And I'm starting to think it's a little bit more true than ever. Because um, one thing that one thing that's kind of weird, uh, strange about you is the fact that you're so scared. The fact that um, you want to just run away. You know what I mean? That's a very adolescent thing. It's not really what a 28 year old would do. Yeah. Do you think that this whole situation is going to make you a little bit stronger and a little bit more prepared to deal with stuff like this? Oh God. Yes. I'm actually seeking help right now. Uh, I'm, I'm starting a vlog channel called bash does things and it's, I'm going to be vlogging my progression with it because it honestly, if it's happening to me, I feel like it's happening to other people too. And I want people to see the progression because I, I want to be held accountable, honestly, about the progression. That's why I want to vlog it. That's why I want to give updates on it because I want to hold myself accountable and do these things. And I figure that's a, it's a great way to do it. So I've already started getting um, professional help with how to do that myself. There's, If there's one thing, there's going to be a lot of people that are still upset about what you did. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty upset with, with what you did, but I think finally, like, the punishment's there. I think enough people know about what went down to, to the point where I, I feel like the punishment has been served in, in the public eye to those people that will continue to hate on you. And those people that will continue to, you know, call you names or think that you're a bad person. What would you say to them? Just stop. <laughs> I, uh, the thing is, I, I wouldn't have anything to say to them because those aren't the people that I'm trying to help. And those people are just trying to hurt me. So I, I'm i trying my best to ignore it and just focus on the people who actually are inspired by what they see. They, they go home and laugh uh, with my videos and people who are actually pushing to try to get out of a shut-in life themselves. So I don't have anything to say to those people because they don't matter to me. Well, you guys heard it here from Basher himself. Will this be the final chapter on the Basher situation? I think it's nearing the end, and I think it's probably the final chapter. Guys, that's it. Drummler Nation now, over 315,000 subscribers.